Hey guys and welcome back. After a so long time we have finally come back to our old how to substance designer series. Now it's been a time so I decided to go over a little bit of some of the steps we have gone over the past but in this case we're going to be showing some examples that you can apply for your materials. So today we're going to be focusing on two specific nodes the vector warp morph grayscale and the vector warp grayscale. Now the second one you might already know as I'm, I'm a big fan of this one I always use it in my materials and I'm always talking about it but let's get a little bit overview on how, what does it do. So if we were to have some tiles yes and we were to add some cracks what would happen is the following yes we will have our cracks tile from one square to the other and that's actually not organic or anything alike to what happens in real life. We could actually use a directional warp yes to move this or displace this but the result we're gonna get is actually as you can see it's actually not really that good so what we need to do is um, take some advantages of this vector node yeah so the vector warp grayscale basically gets an input of grayscales and it warps everything based on a color map or a vector map so it depends the position of the color or the color of the of the shape the sh the, the input is gonna be different in a different position yes so let's say I look here how this is working. So I took a mask from a my tile generator into a flat fill and generated a flat fill to color. So each different color, yes, represents a different position on the image we are looking right now. And it's going to warp my cracks into different positions based in these colors again. So when I get into this node, I see that I have a mess, but there is like some square shape in the middle that is really nice. And if I plug this into my blend node, voila, now my cracks are not tiling anymore. Now there's a second way of actually doing this, and that is by using a flat fill to random grayscale. Many people already use this node, and sometimes it's a little more easy to already like make use of a node you have already created, rather than creating a new one. So if you have a flat fill to random grayscale, what you can do is actually create a gradient map and plug that into your vector warp grayscale. It's also uh, color information in a different way and it still works so that's actually a clever way of using your one node that you might even be using for two things basically we are saving some space so right now what I can do is actually make a mask while at the same time I am choosing the position yes of my cracks so I can change both things at the same time it might not be the best use or the more so let's say a specific use but it's a really nice way of actually saving some space on your memory now let's go to the vector morph grayscale so the vector morph grayscale is going to do exactly the same yes as the vector warp but in this case it's going to just kind of create some organic shapes for us as you can see right here but let's get over it again i want to show you from the beginning so i'm going to do a parallel noise and i'm going to get some big shapes something like this do some random sip on disorder something like those nights and i want to get in this case a gaussian noise you know i'm gonna make something like this maybe and i'm gonna blend both together yeah copy by half then i'm gonna set this into the input and then into the gradient map and the result is the following let me plug this into my 3d viewport So right now it may be a little bit too soft, so let me do some changes here, so you can actually see what's going on. Yeah, there you go. And how we can actually control this? We can really control this in different ways to generate different organic surfaces. Or mostly, I mostly use this one for snow creation and sand creation as well. You need to practice a little bit and explore a lot, and that's actually the fun of this node because you can do actually a lot of things together. I'm going to try using gradient dynamic in here. Yes, we have some of these. Do this vertical and repeat. I have this use as a mask, but I think I'm going to blend both of these together a little bit. Just a little bit. It's gonna give me a little bit better shapes on my material. A little bit sharp. I'm not gonna complain about it, but I think we can actually get here a 
HQ Blur. Just to relax a little bit the shapes. We might work. Yeah, it's relaxing the shapes. I just need to use some high values. And in fact, I think I can also use a non-uniform color blur for this specific case. And I'm gonna use this turn into a grayscale. See how this works. Let's see if this actually makes a difference. So it's, it's actually making a nice difference. See how this is starting to soften a little bit. And this is actually a really great way of, uh, of getting some shades for your organic materials, snow, sand, and so on. Even for water or fluids, you can actually make something really nice in here, as you can see. And you can take as much control as you want from this or creating new shapes that you're going to get a really nice result, as you can see right now.